Have you ever wished you could get more and more and more? Well, the truth is there's a secret and it has something to do with charity. Today, we're going to be reading out of a book called The Art of Giving. And after that, we're going to be meeting Maryam Mas'ud, someone who not only memorized the whole Quran, but someone who is a humanitarian who now gives back. Are you ready? Let's get started. Uh-oh. What did I do this time? I am seven years old. I am sitting in the musalla of my masjid and they just finished praying. The imam of the masjid goes on to the loudspeaker. He grabs the microphone and he announces my name, Amin Azar. I couldn't believe it. I mean, there was hundreds of people in here and I was seven years old. Ah, there was no way that he said my name. And then he goes on the loudspeaker again. Amin Asar, where is Amin Asar? I thought to myself, Allahu Akbar, what did I do this time? There's no way that I did something this bad. We're in front of the whole masjid. I slowly got up from where I was sitting. And as I got up and I started looking around, I could see all of the eyes looking towards me, wondering what in the world I had done. The Imam tells me to come up to the front. I start slowly walking to the front of the masjid and as I was slowly walking, I caught my dad's eyes. He looked at me like, son, what did you do this time? I said, dad, I don't know, I don't know. And I continued walking. When I got to the front of the masjid where the imam was standing, I looked at him and I tried to whisper to him so no one could hear. I said, imam, I'm so sorry. I don't know what I did, but I'm really sorry. I, I, I really apologize. I, please don't, don't do this in front of everybody. My dad is watching. And he said, no, Amin, you didn't do anything wrong. You had done something very right. I said, excuse me, can you say that one more time? He said, Amin, you did something very right. Now, I didn't know exactly what I did, but in front of the entire congregation, the Imam began to tell a story, a story about me. He said, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, I saw this young boy, only seven years old. This young boy opened up his wallet, took out a crisp $10 bill, and he had donated it. It's true, I did. When I fasted for the first time, an uncle from the masjid gave me a $10 bill. I thought about how I could use it. I thought maybe I could buy a super soaker, maybe invest it into my 401k, or maybe my retirement. No, I'm kidding. I didn't want to invest in my 401k. But when the mushroom said that they needed money, I decided to donate it. So on that day, in front of the entire masjid, the imam held up my hand. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, Today, I want you to learn a very important lesson. When you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you much more. He reached into his pocket. He took out a black box. He opened it up and inside there were diamond earrings. He gave them to me as a gift. And he says, brothers and sisters, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true. When you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives you more. I'll be honest, I didn't know why he gave me diamond earrings. I mean, a super soaker, a Lego set would have been nice. 
But to this day, my wife, Sunny, every time we go to the masjid, she wears those diamond earrings. And it reminds me of that promise. When we give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it back to us. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and I even see, I see Ishal from Indiana, and I see Hafsa from Texas, and I see uh, Heba from New Jersey, and Harim the cat, and I see Inaya who's got Amin as her background, you funny little girl. I see Pick Me Amin. Look at Inaya. Look at what Inaya's done. We just got to show you guys. This is what Inaya's done here. She, she picked me as her background. Inaya put me as her background. What a funny little girl. Um, I spotlighted her. There we go. Look at that. It's me and Inaya. All right. Good to see you, Inaya. Good to see you. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today, inshallah, we are going to be reading a really quick story, okay? And after we read that story, we are going to be bringing on our guest speakers, Maryam and Fatima Masood. Let's go ahead and get started. I am going to go to the library where we are going to read our book. <music> Welcome, welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the library. Uh, now, every day we read a different book. Today, I am going to be reading a special book. Uh, it is called The Art of Giving. Um, and in this book, we kind of take that idea to the next level. When we give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us more. But to make sense of it, uh, we're going to be reading this story, but before we start, I need everyone. Now, I mean every single person to say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Can you say it loud and proud? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. All right, let's do it. Give and get more. Asad connects Dad's old radio to the walkie talkies at Fort Amana. I just need one last part to make this work, thinks, thinks Asad. Asad empties out his wallet. Not even a penny. There must be a way I can get some money. They're in Fort Amana in their own treehouse. They just need to get their walkie-talkie to work. On his way home from school the next day, Asad sees a sign on the neighbor's lawn. That's it. I can work for Miss Jordan. Look, it says help needed earned $1 an hour. He's going to be a millionaire in no time. Well, in a million hours, but no time. Asad spends the next few days clearing out Miss Jordan's attic. What have I gotten myself into, thinks Asad. I've never seen so much dust. Days pass. Alhamdulillah, it's looking pretty good now. I'd say Asa did a pretty good job. Miss Jordan is very pleased with Asa's work. God bless you, dear child, says Miss Jordan. I never thought I would see my attic clean again. That's what Miss Jordan sounds like. Miss Jordan pays Asa. Thank you, Miss Jordan. If you need anything else, just let me know, says Asad. On the way to the electronics store, Asad bumps into Amira and Shireen. 
Salam, guys, says Asad. Salam, Asad. Did you hear the news? What news? Says Asad. There was a tornado in Southport. So many people are now homeless, says Shireen. That's awful, says Asad. Amira holds out a money tin. We're collecting money for Islamic relief to help rebuild their homes, says Amira. Winter's close too. We have to fundraise quickly or those families will be left on the streets. Asad looks at the money in his hand. Thanks, Asad. That will help a lot, says Amira. Uh, no, says Asad. This is this money is it's actually for a part I need to repair in Fort Amana's communication system. But Asad, says Amira, go ask Amin. Maybe he has some money to spare. Money to spare, says Amira. Asad, that's very unkind. And Amin took a tin to. Fill on his own, says Shireen. I worked all weekend cleaning Miss Jordan's attic to earn this, says Asad. I didn't expect you to behave so selfishly, says Shireen. What? I'm not selfish. When you share, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always gives you more. Let's go find someone with a bigger heart, says Shireen. Asad buys the part and repairs. The radio. I did it, says Asad. There's an interview on the radio. You survived the Southport tornado. What would you like to tell our listeners? It's hard not having a home, and it's so cold at night, says the person on the radio. I have to return this part. Now, here's the thing. I know that each one of you have likely been in a similar situation. Maybe you had a toy that your parents asked you to give away. Or maybe you were in a moment where there were things going on at the masjid and we could give our stuff away. And you thought to yourself, no, it's mine. I worked so hard on it. I want to keep it. Asad's going to decide to give his money away. Let's see what happens next. Asad puts the radio and walkie-talkies in his red wagon and goes back to the shop. Can I get my money back for this part, says Asad. Was it a, the wrong part, says this man. By the way, look at his shirt. It says, help rebuild Southport. No, it was perfect, but I just need the money for something else. The shopkeeper gives Asad the money. Sir, may I leave my wagon here for a few minutes, says Asad. Certainly, I'll keep my eyes on it. Asad goes to Amira's stall across the shop. Help Southport tornado survivors. Look at her, him. He's going to go donate. The shopkeeper's even watching. Asad puts his money in the tin. I'm glad you decided to give, Asad. I'm sure Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you with the part you need. I just hope the kids have a home soon, says Asad. Amin joins his friends at the stall. Here's my tin I collected from my neighbors. Alhamdulillah, says Amira. Amin points. Hey, Asad, isn't that your red wagon? Yep, that's mine. See you guys later, inshallah. Asad runs back to the shop. Thanks for watching my wagon. I noticed your gizmo. Nice work, says the man. I found just what you needed in a box of old parts in the back. But sir, I don't have money to pay, says Asad. No charge, says the storekeeper. You know what they say. One good turn deserves another. Alhamdulillah. Now, I wanna just talk about this for a second before we read the last page. When it says one good turn deserves another, what it basically means is when you do good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps give it back to you. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises in the Quran that when we give, in fact, everything that we have, it doesn't even belong to us. Allah gave it to us in the first place. So when we give it, 
It's like we're just borrowing it to someone else for now. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us something so much better. Let's read the last page. Back at Fort Amana, Asad, Amin, and Ethan enjoy the new communication system Asad installed. This is the best system we've had so far. How did you do it? Says Amin. Let's just say, the more you give, the more you get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The end. I love this story. I love this story because it's a lesson that I have learned in my real life. And if you ask your mom or your dad or your uncle or your aunt or your grandma or grandpa at dinner today, I promise you that they will be able to tell you a story of how when they gave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it back to them. Now, speaking of giving, today we are bringing on two amazing, wonderful guests People who, mashallah, have, uh, you have all probably heard of. Um, this is a two sisters um, named uh, Maryam and Fatima. Now, Maryam and Fatima, of course, grew up in front of many of our eyes because their YouTube channel is like the most popular YouTube channel on earth. Joking, but not joking, mashallah. Um, but today, Fatima is seven years old. She has memorized the entire Quran. And Maryam is in high school, and she is a humanitarian, so much so that Congress in the United States gave her recognition for all of the work she has done for charity. So without any further ado, let's bring on Maryam and Fatima Mas'ud. Fatima, Fatima, you wanna play school? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, can you hear me okay? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, I can hear you. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. We're gonna spotlight you in a second. There you are. Um, now, um, Maryam and Fat. there we go, that's perfect. So, Maryam, how are you? How is life treating you? Alhamdulillah, really good. Um, we're so excited. Ramadan is here. We're all, um, you know, getting into the Ramadan vibes and Alhamdulillah, it's been really nice. How are you? Counting my blessings, feeling super good that you are here. Now, Fatima, I heard that you turned seven this year and I heard that you memorized the entire Quran. Is that true? <laughs> Masha Allah, and I saw on YouTube that you had a really nice party. How was your party? Good, Alhamdulillah. Was it good or was it super califragilistic, expialidociously awesome? <laughs> <laughs> super califragilistic, expialidociously awesome. Awesome. So, Mariam. I know that this year and over the last couple of years, you've done a ton of work trying to give. In fact, like you even got recognized with like the US Congress, like recognizing you with a prestigious award. What are some of the things that you've been involved with? Alhamdulillah, you know, I'm, I, I, uh, all of my uh, work that I do, I actually give the credit to um, my father. He actually like kind of, paves the path for me so that I can um, do this work. And um, I think it's really important to do like different types of diverse work. Like, of course, Alhamdulillah, on, uh, on Fatima and I's channel, we always focus on religious aspect and Quran and, um, you know, teaching the Quran and learning the Quran. But at the same time, um, we should also look at humanitarian work, interfaith work. Um, so Alhamdulillah, I try my best to do it from all the different aspects with the help of my parents, my father and my mother and my sisters. And Alhamdulillah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm curious, right? Today, one of the things we talked about is like when you give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you more. I'm curious, like, have you felt that to be true as you have kind of played a role in giving and, and trying to help raise funds for so many places? Have you felt that like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you? 
Yes, alhamdulillah, you know, every day we are, we count our blessings and we are so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that he has given us. And we should always, you know, pray for those who are not as fortunate and um, also be generous and give back as well. And even in the Quran, there is so much about charity and being generous to the poor and the orphans. Um, for example, in Surat al-Insan, there, there's a beautiful verse, verse 8 and 9 of Surat al-Insan. and in these beautiful verses um we we give food um to the poor and the orphans and the captive and we feed them for the sake of allah we don't seek any reward from them the reward comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he blesses us for doing our part and giving back for the ummah. I have to pause for a moment and I just have to say, so Mariam, now I have a five-year-old daughter. Her name is Kauthar and she is working on memorizing the Quran. And that last that. just 30 Amazing. seconds of hearing you recite, it made my heart so happy because I feel so blessed that my daughter Kauthar and all of our kids who are watching have a role model like you, someone who has done this. And not just you, Fatima now. Fatima, what was it like to memorize the Quran? You're only seven years old. When did you start and how did you actually go about memorizing the Quran? Um, I started when I was like five, seriously memorizing. And, and then I like, um, <clears throat> and I was finished when I was seven. So when you say, seriously memorizing like what does that actually mean and like I guess I'm curious like did you have a specific way that you went about memorizing the Quran like how did you actually do it um um well I I like started memorizing small stories when I was two or three um like randomly but when I was like five, I started seriously memorizing. Like I did it every day and I did like two pages. Now, would you do that with your mom or would you do that with like a sheikh at your local masjid or would you just do that by yourself? Or maybe you did it with your sister. Um, I did it with my mom. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's so awesome. I love my mom so much and I bet your mom is really, really special too. So um, Fatima, um, if someone is starting to memorize the Quran, like for example, my daughter who's five, and sometimes it can get a little bit difficult, what advice would you give to her? Um, um, I, I would tell her to um, like listen to the Quran more, so, so like it can like, um, so when you test her, it can be more fluid. Can I, can I ask you a favor, Fatima? And it's totally okay if you say no. Would you feel comfortable reciting uh, any surah or any part of the Quran for us? You would? Okay, before Fatima does it, you guys, I want everyone to give Fatima a huge Noor kid, super duper extra califragilistic, expialidociously awesome round of applause. Round of applause for... Fatima, who's about to recite for us, mashallah, only seven years old, amazing, Allahu Akbar. All right, hold on. Yep, hold on. I think I have to ask you that. Sure, Fatim, are you ready? And by the way, if you don't want to recite, you totally don't have to. Are you, are you sure you want to? Yeah. yeah? yeah. All right. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. 
Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum la ta'khudhuhu sinatu wa la nawm lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. And Mariam, I'm sure you must be so tickled to see your little sister, Masha Allah, following in your footsteps. Now, here's the thing. I know I've got a bunch of questions, but I've got a group of a thousand people here on Zoom who are super excited to meet you. So I was thinking I would do is I would call on a couple people to maybe ask you guys some questions if they have any. Does that sound okay? okay. Yeah, All right, so what I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm going to open up the chat box just for a minute or so. Uh, and what I want you to do is I want you to say, is see if you have any questions, all right? And based on that, I might call on you. Please don't spam it, all right? Otherwise, I'll have to turn off the thing, all right? So uh, you guys, don't spam. Don't spam, okay? Um, Yara. Yeah, okay, let me do that. Um, Let's see what kind of questions. Kiki and Yara from Minnesota are asking, how long did it take you to memorize, uh, Mariam? Uh, so for me, Alhamdulillah, I started when, um, it's similar to Fatima, I also started when I was really young, like two or three, but at that time it was just like listening to my mom recite and just following her footsteps like that. Um, but I actually like did it regularly from when I was around seven years old and I finished at nine, so like two years. So Mamu from Minnesota, I'll actually ask her, uh, I'm gonna call on her, let me see if I can call on her. She's from Minnesota, which is one of the best states in the entire country. I think everyone knows that. Um, let me ask. Hold on. Yeah. Hey, assalamu alaikum, Mamu. Assalamu alaikum. What question did you have for Fatima? How did she memorize? What's her strategy to memorize? So, Fatima, what he was asking is, what was your strategy like? You know, you said that you did it for two years and you listened to your mom, but like what, like what were the types of things that you were doing with your mom so that way, you know, Mamu and other kids could try to like copy that? Um, I just, um, I just started from, from the small surahs. Like, um, I started from the three dudes and, and then I went up to the big surahs, like, um, so it was much easier because um because when I was small I couldn't do the big stress. So I started from the small, small ones and then when I became a little bigger, I did the big stress. Excellent. It's a great question. Okay, uh I'm gonna go to uh Umu from Wisconsin. Um hold on one second. All right, I'm going to remove Spotlight here, and I'm going to go to OU. Unmute, and we'll Spotlight them. Hey, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. What is your name? Umu. Umu, and um, is it true that you're actually from Wisconsin? Yeah. And before you ask your question, um, can you just tell the listeners how much better Minnesota is than Wisconsin? Um. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. OK, why don't you ask your question? Um, how do you keep your motivation like to read the Quran and memorize it every day? Like, 
so you don't lose motivation as the days go on. Like the first day you're really motivated and then the last day you're like, ah, I don't want to do this. Uh, thank you, Umu, for a beautiful question. That's a really good question and I think it's really important. So um, I'll try my best to answer it. Um, so yeah, I agree. On um, the first few days, you might feel extremely motivated and you're like, yes, I'm going to read like, like one whole juz of Quran today. But then after that, you, you start, you know, like losing your motivation and you do less and less. So my advice would be instead of on the first day doing so much and tiring yourself out, you should be consistent, but do like, even if it's a small amount, but do it every single day. So you can do maybe a page every day. That way you won't think that oh no today uh, yesterday I did a juz and if I don't do it just today then I'm doing worse than yesterday instead of having that mindset you can be like I did a page yesterday let me do another page today and if I keep going like this then you know it, I'll be consistent but I'm also making progress and that will inspire you to keep going excellent Thank you. all right so here's the thing I really like that question a lot and so and by the way Mariam and Fatima you two are together there's two of you uh, Umu, you, it seems like you have a very handsome brother next to you and you have a little sister next to you as well. So you guys have a team. So before we end, I thought we would do a little competition. All right. Uh, I like playing charades. Uh, the way charades works is I act something out and your goal is to try to guess it. All right. So here's the thing. There are 10 words that I have. And the goal is to see which team gets to five first. Okay. Uh, Umu, do you think you have what it takes to uh, take on Mariam and Fatima? Yes. Mariam and Fatima, what do you think? Do you, do you think you guys are going to take them down? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's do it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the first ever charades online with Mariam and Fatima Masood along with Umu and her brother and sister from Wisconsin, all right? Round number one, all right? These are all words that have to do something with Ramadan. I'm about to start. Azan? Iftar time? Yes! Iftar time! Fatima got it! Ding, ding, ding! All right, one point for Mariam and Fatima. All right, very good, very good, very good. Okay. Date? Yes! Date or Kajur, very good! That was Umu, right? All right, so it's heating yep. up. All right, one, one and one, one and one, one and one. All right, very good. Reading Quran. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was pretty easy. All right, all right. So that's two and one, two and one, two and one. Okay. All right, very good. Now we're gonna do this. Giving the cat. Yes, giving charity, giving charity. Amazing. All right, two and two, two and two. Gosh, you guys, this is this is really good. You guys are doing very well. All right. Drinking water. Yes, drinking water, mashallah. Three to two. You guys, this is this is heated. Three to <laughs> two. It's gonna win. All right, three to two, it's gonna win. All right. Looking for the moon? Yes, looking for the moon. Yes. All right, three to three. I'm really hoping one of you guys wins pretty soon because I'm running out of words, okay? I'm running <laughs> out of words. So it's, uh, it's a dead heat right now, all right? So we're going to do another one, okay? Um, Waking up for Fajr? Close. Waking up for Suhoor? Yes, waking up for Suhoor. Who said that? Fatima. Okay, Fatima. So Fatima, you're at four. Umu, I think you guys are at three. Okay, <laughs> and you, it was good, right? Waking up for Fudge, but Suhoor, was, that's what I was going for. That's what the, okay, so now this could be for all the marbles. This could be for all the marbles, okay? All right.
Walking to the masjid. No. Um. Work, working out? Exercising, running, treadmill. <laughs> okay, am, am I... I don't want to give you a hint, but... Okay, is it a bicycle? <laughs> I'm not going slow. Going fast somewhere. Fasting? Fasting! Oh, yes, fast. fasting, <laughs> fasting. <laughs> all right, it's four to four. This one is for all the marbles. All of the marbles, that's what this one is for, okay? Uh, I just don't know how I'm going to act this out. All right, hold on. Okay. Um, the sun is going down, you eat, and now you have muscles? <laughs> no, I could see how you could think that. <laughs> okay, so... When the sun goes down, what does that mean? Muslim. What time is it? Prayer. Dawn. Is it daytime? Nighttime. Time. Strong. Dawn. Dawn. Strengthening your iman. What's what? another What's another word for uh, if someone is super strong, they are taqwa. If someone's super strong, they they have power, right? Yes. They're powerful. Yeah. So now put them together. The night of power. Oh, yes. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, we have a winner. Oh my goodness, mashallah. Now, you might be wondering, Mariam and Fatima, what do you win for the first ever charades competition on the Noor Kids Ramadan Camp for Kids? We actually don't know the answer to that question. Uh, we haven't got that far, but um, alhamdulillah, umu. It was such a treat. You guys did awesome, neck and neck until the very end. Thank you so much. Thank you. So um, I'm going to let the two of you guys go. And I know that it's getting close to iftar there for you guys in um, New Jersey. I just wanted to ask, um, Mariam, so, you know, when you talked about some of the charity work that you've been doing, like, what does that actually mean? Like, so, like, what are some of the specific things that you've been able to do over the last couple of years? Um, so, alhamdulillah, um, in Ramadan, we, um, we actually do uh, raise uh, charity and funds for um, lots of or orphans and um, Yem uh, poor people in Yemen, Syria, Turkey, especially now with like the um, earthquake that happened in Turkey. So we do, alhamdulillah, raise funds. So also, alhamdulillah, like last year or no, in 2021 in December, I had the amazing opportunity to go on a charity trip to Turk, uh, the border of Turkey and Syria. It was a beautiful city called Rehandi. And over there, we were actually able to help the poor and the orphans with our own hands and some of the Syrian refugees. We met them, subhanAllah, their smiles and their innocence. It really like, um, it was a very like different experience for me. And it really like changed my life um, and changed my view on life. It's so interesting you say that, Mariam, because honestly speaking, many of us, and every night during a Ramadan camp, we make dua and we pray for people who are orphans, for example. We pray for people in areas where there's need. But very few of us have actually gone to see it and been able to kind of experience it and give with our own hands. Um, you said that like it was kind of like a life-changing experience. I guess what's one thing 
that you came away thinking about, right? So after you went there, maybe like, I don't know if you journal or anything like that, but like, was there anything that you reflected on that you realized after having that experience? Yeah, so I think the main thing that when I went there, I realized is how, um, you know, even for the smallest things in life, we should be so grateful and say, we should always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every little thing that we have because we don't, sometimes we forget to realize how grateful, uh, how blessed we are and we forget to be grateful. Um, and so I think it's really important. And specifically one thing that I changed about myself after that trip is I stopped wasting food like completely. I don't, I really like, you know, now after I saw the, the um, or orphans and the poor people in Turkey and the Syrian refugees and how, um, you know, they don't even have like a meal to eat every every day. So I think that really changed how I think of my own food now. And I try my best to not waste any bit of it. And I try my best to always, you know, be grateful for all the blessings that Allah has given me. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you and your sister. Uh, Fatima, I uh, I have a little daughter, five, I've mentioned it before, but every time I see her, I like, is, eat her cheeks a little bit. Um, I feel like eating your cheeks a little bit. I know I can't do that because, you know, Zoom, it's also not socially acceptable to eat people's cheeks that are not your own daughter. But alhamdulillah, <laughs> um, I want to thank you guys so much. Um, before we end, Mariam Fatima, is there anything else you wanted to share with our audience? Yeah, actually, we have this really amazing news that we want to share with everyone. Um, inshallah, uh, inshallah, this week, we are going to be launching a new Quran with Maryam app, and it's going to be uh, having both Fatima and I's recitation of the Quran and many other amazing features like dua, and it's going to have a Ramadan yes. Planner, 99 Names of Allah. And uh, we've been working on it. Alhamdulillah, my father has been working so hard and the entire team has been working really hard. And my mother, um, we all have been working really hard to, uh, you know, uh, develop this app. And so I'm really excited um, for it when, when it launches. I'm really excited for everybody to see it. I'm super excited about it too. And I know that, I know my daughter is going to be crazy about it. She's going to love looking at it. And hopefully she'll memorize Quran through your, uh, your words. So how do people find it? Um, so after it's launched, you can find it on the app store. It's going to be both for iOS and Android. Um, it's going to be called Quran with Mariam. So just if you search that, you should be able to find it. And I'll also put it on my channel, inshallah. So. Yeah, yeah. Put it on your channel. And if you want to tag newer kids in your channel, because I know you have a million followers, then <laughs> we'll find out about it too. No, I'm kidding. But awesome. Um, that is, uh, we can't wait for that to happen. And inshallah, once it does, we'll make, once it's live, let us know. And we'll tell all of our um, friends here. Um, Mariam, Fatima. It is always such a treat to see the two of you. I hope you have a wonderful month of Ramadan. You guys, let's all uh, say goodbye to Mariam and Fatima. We'll do that in gallery mode here so that way we can see this. Bum, ba, da, bum. All right, we'll see you later. Assalamu alaikum, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so for much coming. for having us and have a blessed Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Oh man, Allahu Akbar. You know, one of my favorite things in general is about our Ramadan camp is we've been able to meet such incredible people, right? So for example, last weekend we met um, Ustad Mahdi Amin and Imam Usam Sharif and Yasmin Al-Hadi and now we met Maryam Mas'ud and um, it's been so delightful. Um, and one of the reasons why I think that's delightful is because you guys, as Muslims, we're part of a pretty cool group, right? I feel so happy to be Muslim because of all of these wonderful people who are here with us. And not just me, but also Ishal from Indiana and Zainab from Indiana and Muhammad from Manitoba and Far Fariduddin Maru or Fariduddin and Sajid from Atlanta and Zainab from Manitoba and Shasmin and Aiza from Canada and so on and so forth. Um, now, as I think about our community, uh, I want to make just two quick announcements. Announcement number one. 
Uh, I want you guys to remember on Zoom and wherever, um, you guys should always just use your first name or a nickname. It's never a good idea to share your full name ever online, right? So if you're sharing your full name, it's always better to just share your first name or a nickname. That's always the best way to do it, number one. And of course, number two, you never want to share any of your personal information like email or phone or anything like that just because it's still the internet. I just want to share that as a reminder because it's something I think about when I see some of your names and some of you have included your last names and you really don't need to do that. You can just say your name and the state that you live in. That's good enough. But number two, um, I issued a challenge last night and there is 12 more hours in that challenge. Uh, and I would love for you guys to participate because tomorrow, inshallah, we'll be putting the video together. Uh, we'll roll the challenge right now in case any of you missed it from yesterday. Are you ready? Lightning challenge number three is about to get started. Oh, not three. Tonight, I want you to think about one attribute of Allah. Oh, no, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's right. My bad. Sorry, everyone. That was right. We're going to go back to it. <laughs> Are you ready? Lightning challenge number three is about to get started. Tonight, I want you to think about one attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you especially connect to. I want you to record a video that is no more than one minute. And I want you to say, what is that attribute and why you are connecting with it this Ramadan? Here's an example of one that I did. My name is Amin and I'm from Maple Grove. The name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I am thinking about the most this Ramadan is Al-Wudud, the one who is the most loving. The reason why I think about it is when I'm feeling stressed and I'm feeling anxious, I think about my mom. But now that my mom isn't here anymore, lots of times I think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the most loving. And so I'll ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his name Al-Wudud, to make me feel loved. Now remember, start this video by saying your name and where you live. Then say the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are thinking about this Ramadan. And finally, tell us why. Make sure to record them in vertical mode and keep it under a minute. Inshallah, I can't wait to see what you come up with. I really can't wait to see what you come up with. Many people have already submitted them, and inshallah, this is going to be really powerful for our community. So um, sometimes people ask me, Brother Amin, where do we actually do this? Brother Amin, where do we actually upload it? Well, I want to show you. On our academy.norkids.com website, once you log in, there is a challenge, the lightning challenge. It looks like it's missing an E. Uh, it should be lightning, I think. Uh, anyways, um, there is the ability for you to submit here. And once you submit, you can see some of the ones over here already. Masha Allah. All right. So that is on here. Um, and then uh, number two is tomorrow uh, we are doing uh, our Minecraft night. Now, I need to be 100% honest with you when I say I've never played Minecraft before in my entire life. Uh, but... Inshallah, we thought to ourselves, hey, you know what? During the month of Ramadan, like we talked about last week, if we have fun for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even that can be worship. And so I'm thinking, inshallah, we're going to try to do it. We're going to try to have a good time. We're going to try to figure it out. Uh, but um, we're still working on it. So inshallah, we'll see how it comes up. With that, I want to thank you so much. And we will see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.